Okay, because this is a very special video, I have the Prospects gear all over me. Well, mostly the NCAA gear, because I don't have anything Vequa Lakers related, but it's the Quinn Hughes University of Michigan hat, and it's the Brock Besser North Dakota jersey. Let's see if we can... Oh yeah, there you go. There's the Besser right there. So this video is going to be a tier list of Vancouver Canucks related prospects. Now, just a few rules. We're only going upwards to 2015 as the most recent guy on this list over here, including the free agent signings and including some trades that the Canucks made to get some other players. In order to actually qualify, you can't be a full-time NHLer. So there's no Demko on this list. There's no Gaudette. There's no Zach McEwen. Those guys are pretty much NHL players already, so we're not including them here on this tier list. So without further ado, let's go over onto the tier list, onto the website, and this is what we have right here. Now, we already went over the rules as to who's on this and who's not. We have ourselves 25 prospects here that belong in the Vancouver Canucks system, and we will be ranking them on franchise, elite, top six, top four, or starter, middle six, bottom six, or excuse me, bottom four, fringe starter, bottom line, backup, fringe NHL or AHL star, and AHL regular. Now, I think it's actually kind of easily identifiable what these tiers actually mean. Also, there's heavy construction going on outside my house, so if you hear anything, bangs, clangs, big metal pipes and all that stuff, then please ignore that. But just for spoilers, we don't have anybody in the franchise tier right now. I think if we were to include Quinn Hughes and Elias Pettersson, they would take up this spot, but this is prospects. This is not NHL players right now. So the 25 names we have over here, all guys we've either drafted or traded for or signed. So let's start over here with Lucas Yashik, a guy that the Vancouver Canucks drafted all the way back in 2015, 174th overall. He's a guy who's a bit older, but I'm going to put him here into our bottom line spot because Yashik is already an AHL star, AHL regular player, and I think that he's honestly got NHL potential. So I'm going to put him over here because that's what I feel is appropriate. Then we have ourselves Vasily Podkolzin, 10th overall by the Vancouver Canucks in 2019. He's going to go up here. It's Pod. Pod Colson is elite, ladies and gentlemen. He's going up here for a reason. I think he is better than all these other tiers over here. Then we have Niels Hoaglander, who is right underneath him. Hoaglander is a guy who was also drafted in the 2020, or excuse me, 2019 NHL entry draft in the second round 40th overall. He has top six potential, in my opinion. He's a guy who can come in here with his incredible puck skills and offensive drive and totally take control of things. So I'm going to put him over here. He's not elite like Pod Colson is, in my opinion. I think Pod Colson does have some higher potential, but Hoaglander is going to be a really good NHL player as well. Therefore, we have him over here. Next up, it's Ethan Kepin, the Vancouver Canucks 122nd overall pick in the 2019 draft. I'm going to put him on the bottom line here because Ethan Kepin is a guy who, in my opinion, has all the tools to become an NHL regular. That was always something that I remember saying about Kepin, that he indeed is skilled enough and he has the frame and the offensive mind to actually stay in the NHL. But the ceiling for Kepin is kind of a little bit different. I thought he was going to be much better this year than he turned out being. That was mostly because he got off to a really slow start with the Flint Firebirds. But I still do think that there is indeed NHL potential with this player. Next up, it's Carson Folk, a guy who was an overager that the Vancouver Canucks drafted last year as well. Folk was drafted in the fifth round, 133rd overall. He had a pretty okay season for a guy who was in his draft plus two year because he was already an overager when he was drafted. It wasn't anything too hot. And I think just the upward progression that Folk has been exhibiting, I would more likely be comfortable putting him in this tier rather than any of the other tiers over here. I do think that, Fo my goodness, that's loud outside. I do think that Folk does have some NHL potential, but I would probably only feel comfortable going up to here in terms of how good he is going to be. 
Next up, we have ourselves Artur Silovs. He is a Vancouver Canucks goaltender drafted out of the 2019 NHL entry draft in the sixth round. I have Silovs also in the fringe NHLer spot, mostly because you never really know what's going to happen with goalies. He went over to the OHL this season. He was really good in some parts of the season. He had his really good games, he had his really poor games, and he had his pretty okay games. But Silovs, to me, does indeed have some form of NHL potential, it's just I'm not necessarily too confident in saying that he's a definitive backup, or that he's a fringe starter, or that he's going to be a starter. Next up, we have ourselves Carol Plaschek, a guy who the Vancouver Canucks also drafted in the 2019 draft. He was a sixth-round guy along with Silovs. I'm also going to put him in the fringe NHLer spot. He's been playing in the Pro Check League, and he's been pretty okay. As okay as an 18-year-old can be in that league, because he wasn't given all the ice time in the world. So, the fact is, he's able to play in a men's league, and that, to me, is the biggest quality as to why he's going to slot in over here. Lucas Yashik actually had a similar trajectory, except he kind of exploded once he hit Utica, so that's why I have Lucas Yashik over here and Karol Plaschek over here. Next up, we have ourselves Jack Malone, another sixth round pick from the Vancouver Canucks. This guy, I'm going to put him in the bottom lineup over here, not because I think he is significantly better than Silovs or Plaschek, but because the track record of Jack Malone is much better than these other two in my opinion. Malone was really good in the USHL last season, and this season, playing for one of the better NCAA teams, he wasn't given all too much ice time. So his production wasn't all too great. You may be looking at his production saying, okay, why is he in your bottom line? But I think going towards the future of his NCAA career, Malone is going to be in a spot where he can definitely get himself some more points and show off his worth a little bit more. Next up, it's a 7th round pick in Aiden McDonough, also drafted out of the USHL. I'm going to put him here in the fringe NHLer spot because, like Folk, he was an overager when the Canucks drafted him, and his numbers in the NCAA this season were pretty good, but I don't think it's anything to write home about. I do think he does have some NHL potential, but I wouldn't be too confident to say that he's a definitive bottom line player, a middle six player, or a top six player, but that's just me. Obviously, you can disagree with what I'm saying here and go off in the comments as to why I'm wrong. Next up, we have ourselves Arvid Kostmar. This is a player drafted at the end of the 2019 draft. He is a player who I'm going to put, honestly, in the middle six category because Kostmar's draft plus one season was really, really gosh darn good. This guy is looking to be a potential steal. I called it back when we drafted him a year ago, and we've been talking about him somewhat periodically on Twitter and on Reddit, but Arvid Kosmar is a guy who legitimately does have an incredible set of numbers, and just the way he's progressing, I would not be surprised in the slightest if he forced himself into a middle six role in the NHL one day, either on a third line or once in a while stepping up onto a second line spot. So, yeah, it's kind of crazy, but I'm saying that he has better potential than Malone, Kepin, Plaschek, Silovs, Folk, and McDonough. So that's the entire 2019 draft class, aside from Pud Colson and Hoaglander. Next up, we have ourselves the 2018 guys. Here is Jet Wu, a guy who I'm going to put here as a top four player. Heck yes, boys. Jet Wu, to me, is going to be a top four defender in this league. He was drafted out of the second round when many thought he could have been a first rounder. Similar to Niels Hoglander, they're almost sharing the same story. So that's what we have over here. Then we have ourselves Tony Uttonen, a guy who I'm going to say is probably going to be a bottom four defenseman, either on the second pairing or on the third pairing, because this guy is a guy who you look at his numbers and you say, what's so special? Yeah, he's really not a point producer, but the way he's able to calmly play the defensive side of things and actually contribute to his team... It's very good, and I think Utenin is one of the more underrated players in the Canucks system, mostly because he doesn't put up any flashy numbers or he doesn't do any crazy highlight reel moves, but he's just a really safe defenseman overall. Next up, we have ourselves Artem Manukin, a sixth round pick, 186 overall by the Vancouver Canucks in 2018. Look, realistically, just the numbers that he's been putting up, he belongs here because he posts so much numbers in so many different leagues when he was younger. 
but his recent stretch of play in the KHL honestly indicates to me that he probably belongs over here. Sure, a ceiling like this does exist pretty much within everybody, but the likelihood of reaching that is so low that I can only really see Manukian becoming an AHL star. He was a really good point producer when he was younger, but nowadays in the KHL, it's not all too special in my opinion. Going over to a 7th round pick in the 2018 draft, it's Matthew Thiessen. Now, I'm going to put him only just here in the AHL regular spot, but that's only because his numbers this year are incredibly bad. He's played one game in the NCAA, and his goals against average is like 25. Not 2.5, 25. Yeah, he has a really, really bad track record so far in his draft plus one, or excuse me, his draft plus two hockey playing career, and that's the only reason I'm going to put him here at AHL regular. You never know with seventh round drafted goaltenders, if he becomes good, he becomes a fringe NHLer or a backup or a starter one day, then I'll eat my words. But for now, Matthew Thiessen to me, just from his statistical profile, is an AHL regular goaltender in my opinion. Next up, it's 2017, we have ourselves Cole Lind, a guy who I'm going to put here in the top six category. Heck yes, baby. Just like Jet Wu, just like Hoglander, second round steals. Cole Lind was honestly kind of hovering in this territory last season, but he became so much better. And as a result, he forced his way up into this spot, in my opinion. He was so good. He just exploded offensively this year in the Utica Comets system. And as a result, he belongs over here, in my opinion. Next up is Jonah Gajovic, another second round draft pick. We took this guy 55th overall with the Tortorella pick from Columbus, so that's very nice to see. Jonah Gajovic is a guy who I'm going to put over here in the middle six category as well. Maybe earlier on in his career, I would have probably said he had top six potential, but for now, I say he's got middle six potential. He hasn't really been progressing upwards in terms of the offensive production in the Utica Comet system, but everything else that you can excel at as a power forward, strong guy type player, Jonah Gajovic has been excelling at. So I'm going to put him here in the middle six. So that's what we're going to go off with. Next up is Michael DiPietro, a guy who the Vancouver Canucks took in the third round, 64th overall 2017 NHL entry draft. I'm going to put him also in that fringe starter category here. Now, if I were to say that DiPietro would become a starter, I wouldn't be able to 100% confidently say that. This territory right here, elite starter material, that's like Thatcher Demko material. I don't think DiPietro is going to be at that level, so I'm just going to put him for the sake of argument over here in the fringe starter category. It's better than a backup. It's better than a fringe NHLer. I think that DiPietro, to me, is indeed an NHL athlete once he hits his prime, which is why I'm going to put him over here. Next up, it's Jack Rathbone, a guy who, honestly, I'm going to place my bets and put him in the top four. Rathbone has exploded offensively. Two years ago, or excuse me, last year, we thought Rathbone was special because he was playing with Adam Fox. This year, Adam Fox went to New York, and Jack Rathbone was by himself, but he was still an incredibly great offensive defenseman. The guy can absolutely hammer a puck, and for a guy that the Vancouver Canucks drafted in the fourth round of 2017's draft, it's crazy how he's even in this territory, in my opinion. Even getting somebody over here would be crazy, but to me, Jack Rathbone is in the same echelon as as the Jet Woos, the Cole Lins, and the Niels Hoglanders. Next up, it's Petrus Palmu, a guy who, while I love and I loved seeing his path, I'm sorry man, I'm gonna have to put Petrus Palmu in the fringe NHLer spot. He wasn't all too great with Utica, he was really good when he went back to Finland, but the thing is, his size potentially might be holding him back. And if he comes over back to the AHL soon and proves me wrong and he shows that he belongs over here, then I'll eat my words. But for now, just based off of what we've seen, I'm putting Petrus Palmo here in the fringe NHLer spot. I don't really know if there is a huge NHL future for Petrus Palmo. Then going over to the other drafts, 2016 saw Oli Olevi. I'm going to do it, man. I'm going to put him here in the top four. When we're drafting... Fifth overall, we're supposed to get a guy who belongs here or here. We did this with Pedersen, we did this with Pud Coles, and we did this with Hughes, but Yolevi man, I'm gonna say he belongs over here because it's been a long time, he hasn't really had the best luck with injuries, 
And if there is an NHL future for Yolevi, I wouldn't see him surpassing a top four ceiling. It's unfortunate, but like, you know, at least we have an NHL prospect who is seemingly capable of playing AHL time and who looks like he would be an NHLer down the line, right? As for William Lockwood over here, drafted in the third round, 64th overall in 2016, I'm going to say he's a fringe NHLer. He hasn't been too hot in the NCAA as of late. He's been suffering from a lot of injuries, and there's a lot of rumor going around on whether or not he's actually going to sign with Vancouver. I wouldn't be surprised if Locke would make the NHL, but I would honestly be kind of surprised if he found himself as a mainstay NHL player, either in a middle six role or a bottom line role. I see him more as a fringe guy, in my opinion, just because his development has been so hindered by injuries and whatnot. Next up, we have ourselves Guillaume Breeze Bois, a guy who was drafted in the 2016 NHL entry draft, a guy who Trevor Linden and Benning and all those guys, they said that if Breeze Bois was available in the second round, they would have taken him. They took him in the third round. Excuse me, did I say 2016? I meant 2015. For Guillaume Brisebois, we're going to put him here in the bottom line, mostly because I don't really see Brisebois getting any better than this. He's already somewhat a fringe NHLer because he's always going up and down, but I wouldn't be surprised if Brisebois found himself playing upwards of 50-ish games in a year in a bottom pairing role. But I would be surprised, however, if Brisebois became a top four guy or whatever. So I'm going to put him here in the bottom line just for the sake of argument. Then we go into our final few players. Linus Carlson here is a guy who I don't know too much about, but everybody I hear talking about him says that he is going to be an NHLer one day. Now, just because I don't know all too much about him, for the sake of argument, I'm putting William Carlson, or excuse me, Linus Carlson over here in the fringe NHLer spot. Meaning that I wouldn't be surprised if he played in the NHL, but I kind of don't expect a mainstay NHL role out of these players. Next up, it's Brogan Rafferty, a guy who came out of nowhere pretty much. I'm going to put him here in the middle six, bottom four pairing caliber because Brogan Rafferty is one of the best AHL defenders in terms of point production in the entire league. And it's crazy how he was able to do that just immediately out of the NCAA. He's blown all the expectations out of the water, and he's one of the best players, and even though other guys like Yo Levy and all that stuff technically are better than him, I guess, in terms of the defenseman depth and all that, Rafferty is like 24 or 25 or whatever, so I don't see the ceiling going upwards to here from this player. If Rafferty was like, 20, then sure, I would put him here. But, like, he is not. He's much older than that. So, he's only going here just for the sake of argument. And the last guy that we got is Josh Tevez. Tevez is another Vancouver Canucks drafted, or excuse me, free agent signed prospect from the NCAA. I'm probably just going to put Tevez here as AHL star. He wasn't all too great with Utica this year, and he had to spend a lot of time in the ECHL. So, Wrapping things up, pretty much, this is what we have as our prospect list. Pod Colson as the elite, Yolevi, Rathbone, Wu, Hoglander, and Lind as a top four, a top six, or a starter. Gajevic, Arvid Kosmar, Utenin, DiPietro, and Rafferty as a middle six, bottom four, or fringe starter. Brisebois, Yashik, Malone, and Kepin as bottom line or backup. Lockwood, Plashik, Silovs, Folk, McDonough, Palmu, and Carlson as fringe NHLers, Manukian and Tevez as AHL stars, and Matthew Thiessen as an AHL regular. Obviously, my opinion is not perfect. If you have any opinions, you can make your own list over here on tierlist.com. You can really just go nuts with it because I know everybody kind of will. I'll post this on the Twitter too. We'll see how much traction that gets. But for now, this is what we have for our Canucks prospect tier list. Actually, you know, I'm thinking about it a little bit more. I would like to have Linus Carlson here in the bottom line spot. I was just taking a look at some of his numbers. Like, he honestly looks pretty good. And for a 20-year-old guy in the Allsvenskan, 40 points in, what, 48 games played is not bad. And in the qualification round, he had two goals in one game. So Linus Carlson, to me, honestly, just looking at his profile, looks a little bit more like a bottom line guy rather than a once in a while NHL guy. So I'm going to leave things like this for now. And I guess with that, we wrap up the video. My goodness, it's been really long. Hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.